Psalm 62, 5 through 10. I'd remind you, you can pull out your Bible, you can pull out your phone, you can find it there. I'm actually reading from the uh, New Living Translation today, but uh, you'll find, again, they're all very similar. Um, I hope you're going to be challenged. If you ever found yourself struggling with mediocrity, the common, the average, just what is accepted or normal, hopefully we're going to look at that differently by the time we're done today. Listen to the word of God found in Psalm chapter 62. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. O oh, my people, trust in Him at all times. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Common people are as worthless as a puff of wind, and the powerful are not what they appear to be. If you weigh them on the scales, together they are lighter than a breath of air. Don't make your living by extortion or put your hope in stealing. And if your wealth increases, don't make it the center of your life. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. What is average? What's common? What's mediocre? What's acceptable? Or maybe I should ask it this way. What's the lowest common denominator? What's the lowest acceptable standard? I, I, any of you familiar with just getting by? Just doing just enough to survive? In high school, did any of you ever just think, well, you know, I don't need to get an A. In fact, I don't want to get an A. In fact, I'm just going to, what do I have to do to, what do I have to, do to graduate? What do I, what's the minimum standard of what I got to do to get by? I actually remember, I, I was not the best student in high school. In fact, honestly, I remember sleeping through physics class. Uh, why? Because I could. Because I didn't really have to study. I just, I, that's all I had to do. In fact, it was kind of amazing to me that the teacher was okay with it because I would sleep in the front row and the teacher would actually move to the second row and teach to everybody behind me. Somehow, the lowest common denominator or just that whatever it takes to just pass was, is acceptable or it's acceptable to the person who's accomplishing just enough. Um, what about going to work? Any of you, maybe you don't want to admit this for yourself, but it, or do you, any of you realize that you work with people who are just, they show up and they punch the clock, and then they punch the clock when they go home, and during the day they just kind of walk around like, yep, I'm here, I'm doing my job, I'm getting done what needs to be done, it's okay. But they don't have enthusiasm. They're not doing it with the greatest ability that they could. They're just doing what needs to be done to get through the day. Does that sound familiar to anybody? You know, I think we've gotten to the point where the lowest common denominator becomes acceptable. Did you know that um, to, to pass a, um, carry, a handgun carry permit test, you, you don't even have to shoot a gun? Did you know right now, currently, you just have to take a test and know some basic information and, and write that down, but you, you don't ever have to have shot a handgun. I think that might not be expecting enough from people. When do we start saying that we expect more? What does it look like to expect more from ourselves than to just get by? Now, I do want to say, qualify, um, even though I slept through physics in high school and just was comfortable with the C's and B grades, you know, just enough. In college, I decided to study and found out I could get straight A's if I wanted to. You, you know, we can achieve more if we decide to achieve more. We can overcome if we decide to apply ourselves. We can be a worker of great excellence. We can overcome that mediocrity. You know, in, in Honduras, um, you have a different understanding of what the mean average is. You have a different understanding of, you know, this is what's the average in society. When you, whenever you travel someplace different, you begin to look and say, oh, wow, the, the average here is 
less than our poverty level. Wow, the average here is, is less even education than, than we would expect at home. Even though there were several kids that were there that were in the university, that were, were headed to the university studying agriculture. Um, they love John Deere down there, by the way. Um, so some very similar aspects, but, but the truth is the means was very different. So then you have to begin to ask yourself the question, well, what does overcoming mediocrity look like then if it's different for that person than it is for me? Or if it's different for that community than it is for me? Or, or in our own society, do we begin to measure that there's an average of all people is somewhere in here and we should strive for it? Or we, do we just look at the individual and say, this individual is this and could apply to here, but actually could be much more. Maybe we should look at ourselves first and begin to ask ourselves the tough question of what is excellence? What does it mean to live above mediocrity? One of the workers um, down there, Pepe, you know, we'd never learned a whole lot about Pepe other than, you know, kind of, he never spoke much. He was kind of always just in the background there helping with the family. You come to the end of the week and you find out, you know, Pepe doesn't have anywhere to be, doesn't have a job. There's not any other real jobs to have, but he's willing to help. He's willing to serve quietly, not getting paid, just being good friend, good family, good neighbor. And I got to thinking to myself, you know, of all the nights that we sat around in a circle and talked about the things that impacted us from this mission trip, we never once talked about Pepe. We never really once talked about the, the ministry that he had or the compassion that he had or the willingness to serve that he had. But I look at him and I think, oh my goodness, if we could all just do the same, the kind of ministry and testimony that we would have just standing up and caring for our neighbor. Even though he had nothing, he was willing to give himself completely. In my mind, he rose above mediocrity. He rose above the rest in the community because he was, wasn't just sitting there watching life go by or watching his neighbors. Instead, he was involved, his hands-on ministry. This family that we helped, a special needs child, I, I can't even imagine, quite honestly, how the parents, these elderly parents, were caring for this adult special needs person. I, I couldn't imagine how they were able to lift him from bed into a wheelchair each day. And they don't have a, a, a solid floor, it's just dirt. We're building a house that's going to have a floor and they have a lift already purchased for them so that they'll be able to move him from bed into wheelchair and wheelchair into bed, actually care for him. There's no home that they can move him to, no way that they can take care of him outside of that. And then I looked at them and I thought, you know what? They rise above mediocrity too. Because they weren't just willing to accept the circumstances. They weren't just saying, hey, this is all we can do. Instead, they were giving their all and they were finding ways to go above and, and care for this child that, quite honestly, in America... I think a lot of families would have thrown in the towel and said, I, we can't do this. And I sometimes look at societies that don't have as much and I see them able to rise above more than I even see us able to do the same. Because we have grown more comfortable with common. We've grown more comfortable with, with just that lowest common denominator, the least that's expected of me. Hey, that's all I really need to do. But they give me testimony and proof that we can and should always do more to strive for excellence. You know, when I read this passage, I have to admit, there are some passages in the Bible that can just kind of slap you. You read it and you think, you know, hey, I think I've got all this going for me. I think life is good and, and I think that I know what's going on. But then you read a passage like this and it says, boy, I'm not worth as much as I thought. Listen to this verse 9. It says, common people are as worthless as a puff of wind. Ouch. <laughs> Shouldn't that hit us just a little bit? Like, wow, okay, God, I guess I'm, I'm not all that. And then it says, and the powerful, they're not what they appear to be. 
If you weigh them on the scales together, they're lighter than a breath of air. Wow. Now, now to put this in context, in that day, the people that were common, that was like 90% of the people. The people who were powerful, you know, the rulers, the scribes, the Pharisees, those who were in power of some kind, they were, they were like smaller, like 10%, 1%, you know, kind of like the 1% we talk about in our world. But God says if you weigh all of them, if you put them all together in a bunch, He says that together we're nothing more than a breath of air. Here today, gone tomorrow, nothing. And I got to thinking, what does that really mean? How do I apply that when it, when it comes to overcoming mediocrity? What does it mean to have value? Don't, doesn't God tell me that I have value? What is my purpose if I'm nothing more than a breath of air? What empowers us to defy mediocrity and that thing that just allows us to do just enough? And I get to thinking to myself, you know, this passage is it's interwoven. It's one of those that, that if you look at it differently, it might shine a different light on it. Have any of you ever read one of those uh, posts? Often I've seen them on Facebook where you read something this way and it sounds just like horrible. And then like you read it in complete reverse and all of a sudden it turns the, the story all the way around. All of a sudden it becomes hopeful. It becomes inspiring. It gives you new purpose. And I think that's what happens in this passage. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip this and read it to you. I want you to hear it differently. I want you to hear the hope that's infused at the end. I'm going to read verses 9 and 10 and then read 5 through 8. Common people are as worthless as a puff of wind, and the powerful are not what they appear to be. If you weigh them on the scales, together they're lighter than a breath of air, don't make your living by extortion or put your hope in stealing. And if your wealth increases, don't make it the center of your life. Here's where it turns. Let all that I am wait before God. For my hope is in Him. He alone is my rock, and my salvation, my fortress, where I will not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. O oh, my people, trust in Him at all times. Pour out your heart to Him, for God is our refuge. Doesn't that give a little different tone? I mean, it starts out hopeless. It starts out like a breath. We're nothing more than a breath of air. But then it turns around and says, Oh, hope in the Lord. Let all that I am hope in the Lord. Now, now let me just take the all that I am part because all that I am, all that I am as a C student in physics class in high school, all that I am as just this average person, all that I am as, as a CEO of a company or as janitor, whatever we are, if we give all that we are, all of a sudden it becomes more. Last night in talk back, um, Mark Shear shared a story about a company that he works with that um, one of the things that they do is they, they read a book and, and the uh, CEO continues to tell the owner, actually continues to tell everybody in the corporation, he says, you know, it doesn't matter what job you have. Everybody here is important and of value and what we do is important and has value. But he says, I don't want you to do your job for me. I don't want you to do your job for, for the people that we're making this product for. I, I want you to do your job as if you are serving God. Whether you're the janitor, whether you're the CEO, whether you're a technician, whatever your job is, I want you to do it as if you are doing your best for God. And think about that. All of a sudden, mediocrity is washed away. All of a sudden, the lowest common denominator doesn't matter anymore because we're doing everything with everything that we've got to give God glory, to give God honor. So that people, when people look at us, they see God giving His best through us to others. Defying mediocrity means that no matter who we are, even if we're unemployed, living in Honduras, even if we're a mechanic, a CNA, 
even if we're a CEO or a C student, whoever we are, if we give our all to God, if we wait on God, if we put our hope in God, if we trust that He is our salvation, and as verse 7 says, He is our victory and our honor come from God alone. If we focus on that, then all of a sudden, mediocrity is shattered. And excellence becomes our new form. Our overcoming, defying mediocrity is based upon our relationship with God. Not upon whether we're common or powerful. Did you hear this passage? It says, common or powerful doesn't matter, we're a breath of air. But if we wait on God, we are victorious. If we hope in God, we have victory. I'm inviting you today, I'm challenging you today to put your faith in God. When you face challenges, don't think you can come overcome it on your own strength. But realize when you face those challenges that the only way to overcome them is to put yourself in the very presence of God and wait for God to give you the strength. Our strength is always going to fall short. But God's name will always overcome. I challenge you this week to defy mediocrity. Would you pray with me?